Right, I was flagged down actually uh, on the on Broad River Road, uh, heading out. I was flagged down by the victim. Can you give us a little like maybe timeline or how it describe how it unfolded from that point? Uh, the victim flagged me down. Um, she was uh, she had blood all about about her face, and uh, I got out with her, and she told me that she had been assaulted. Uh, what subject had assaulted her? Uh, describing the subject, and told me. Uh, in what direction the subject fled. So I immediately got her some, uh, called for assistance for EMS for her and went looking for the subject that had fled across the street behind the gas station. And that was about? That was around 1.30, 1.31 in the afternoon. About this time last week, right? Tuesday? That's correct. Um, I went across the street looking in my patrol vehicle behind the gas station where she said that he had fled to. And uh, within within two minutes of looking for him, um, I came across a, um, a person in between two buses. Um, these two buses were parked behind the gas station. Uh, they were unattended. And um, I saw the, the suspect in, in, standing in between the two buses. And uh, I went to go... Um, to go approach him in my vehicle, and I went ahead and immediately called out a 10-3, uh, which is basically when you feel uncomfortable in a situation and everybody on the channel is supposed to be quiet. Um, at that time, the, the suspect came out of the, uh, came away from the bus uh, toward me, at which time I, um, I attempted to deploy my taser at him. My taser malfunctioned, and, and uh, he fled down St. Michael's Road which is at what time I, I started to pursue him and I caught it out that chase was on. Um, from then on, uh, he hid, went out of my sight, um, and uh, I lost visual of him. Um, and I told other deputies that were responding that did come on the scene um, what direction he went to, which was down Van Lingle. Um, and while we were looking for him, I turned around to walk back from Van Lingle and I um, observed him on the corner of a house on Van Lingle. Um, we, I gave chase to him again, very briefly. He, unfortunately, uh, crossed path with another, um, another lieutenant, a Lieutenant Odom um, at Dewart, at which time um, gunfire was, excha was exchanged. Um, I returned fire as well. Um, subject continued to flee toward Whiteford, um, where he was encountered by other deputies um, where more crossfire uh, appeared. He crossed over um, Whiteford into Farrington Way, uh, and deputies lost visual of him from there. Um, from that point, um, I jumped into the, the, a vehicle of uh, uh, another lieutenant, and um, we went over to Farrington Way Apartments uh, where um, I thought he was last seen at. Um, Anonymous call came in stating that he was seen running down the fence line of um, Farrington Way, between Whiteford and Farrington Way, um, heading away from Broad River Road. Uh, so I jumped in another vehicle um, of another deputy's and went further down into Farrington Way, halfway, where I thought would be a, a good position to set up for perimeter. Um, while we were waiting on a perimeter, K-9 did come and track. Um, and at that time, they were about to, uh, I think they were about to, start another track um, to see if they could locate him. And then uh, I just so happened to be at the right place at the right time where a, a, a female came out from behind a building and, um, and I immediately told her to go back inside her, her apartment. And she told me, ma'am, I think the, uh, the person you're looking for is in my apartment. Um, at that time, she described what he looked like, um, which was in fact the same description that, that we were looking for. And um, I went ahead and I, I requested for other units to respond. At that time, other units responded. Um, we set up uh, another perimeter around the apartment, and uh, all of a sudden, the next thing I remember is he fled out the back door, uh, and gunfire was exchanged. He ended up uh, pointing a, his weapon at my direction, coming around a vehicle, at which time um, I was struck in, in the chest, and uh, I returned fire and uh, he was continuing to flee away from me 
as he was shooting uh, with his arm extended behind him uh, with his, his hands to the side, kind of like a, a gangster style. Um, but he continued to flee until he was uh, finally subdued uh, by the gunshots on the corner uh, of the building next door. Uh, immediately when I got hit, it felt like a bee sting. Um, my instant thought was a bee sting, but then this, it's like in a split second, it, I, I thought, did I just get grazed? And then I, it instantly ticked me off. And it, I, I felt like a pit bull on a chain suddenly wanting to go, to go get you know, the person that, that was just trying to hurt me. Um, which, which I ultimately did. Um, you know, it didn't feel good. You know, I'm, I was sore after that. Um, there was a little bruising, uh, but uh, but I'm fine now. Um, you mean after? After you were shot. Uh, well, once I, I got, once after the, uh, the suspect um, did go down, uh, you know, it was, it was observed that I, I did get hit in the, uh, in the um, chest, and, uh, and I was taken to the hospital um, immediately. Uh, before going to the hospital, I, I, I took off my shirt and my vest to see if I'd been shot. Um, I noticed there was a hole in my vest and realized I, I had been shot. At that time, I had another uh, CPD unit who um, helped me check myself to see if, and in fact, there was a, a bullet hole or anywhere that I had been shot that I, I just hadn't been aware of because of my blood pressure being up. What is it like to see your vest today? Um, it's a very eerie feeling. I mean, it's a very eerie feeling. But I'm, I'm glad to know that I'm alive and, uh, and that the, uh, the departments issue us the tools that we need to do our jobs on a daily basis. And it just so happens that that one saved my life that day. You, uh, I don't know what you said about her being like a pit bull ready to go off the chain. Mm -hmm. but, but the sheriff is even telling us and, and just kind of watching you here that that's how you, you go about your job uh, whenever you do it. But there's a personal side to this, and sometimes the, the job puts you in a situation where it becomes a little more than just your daily duties as a sheriff's deputy. Talk to me about going forward as a sheriff's deputy. Do you have new uh, respect for the work you and other deputies do? Do you have a new perspective on your job? Has this kind of changed your impression of, does that make sense, kind of going forward past this experience and now kind of having that as something you've, you've gone through? I think, um, it, well, it, it's definitely changed um, me, and I'm sure it's changed a lot of the deputies, other deputies that were involved. Uh, of course, I, I wasn't the only one who was involved. Um, you know, there's other deputies that were involved in the situation, too. And I'm sure it's, it, it's as well changed their life in, in some way. Um, you know, I look at life more of a blessing you know, more so than I did the day before. Um, you know, just just right off the bat from that incident, there was something different about it. It's like a sixth sense, you know. Something was different about that call. Um, you know, as I, as I speak to you today, you know, I thank God every day that I have my life. You know, and I'm blessed. I was gonna ask you, uh, back when you initially started your timeline, you had, you had gone from the CVS parking lot and, and pursued him across the street, I assume, kind of at, at the victim's direction. Mm -hmm. you know, I was going to ask you, I mean, you, you encounter incidents every day, so was there kind of a uh, gut feeling or something about this that where your kind of law enforcement intuition kicked in that said, hey, you know, step up, tread a little more lightly, you know, look look both ways maybe one more time before you advance to the next corner or the next building or whatnot on this particular call? Most definitely. The, the experience throughout the years of, um, you know, just being in law enforcement and what I've dealt with uh, working on the streets, uh, it, it was, it helped me a lot um, out there, the, the knowledge that I had, you know. Um, 
with, with somebody new who just started, um, probably not be so much observant and so careful. Probably not, but you never know until you get in, in that, that um, situation. Um, as far as you know, the other deputies go, the camaraderie was just wonderful. Um, gave me chill bumps when I got hit, and they all surrounded me in a, in a big old shield. You know, and that's something that still gives me chill bumps when I even think about it. There were a lot of other folks out there with you when this, that last exchange of gunfire happened. Can you kind of just kind of lay out the scene for Um, it's still gray about the whole situation of, of you know, for the last time that there was gunfire. Fire. Um, all I can say is that. I'm blessed and I'm glad that nobody else got hurt 